I'm going to be transplanting these seedlings into another seedling box. I'm going to be doing it a little prematurely because my seedlings are wilting. And I think I know why. There are really three reasons that cause seedlings to wilt. One is too much heat. In other words, they're not able to transpire or perspire the water through the leaves to keep the plant moist so they dry out. Another reason is because of too much water and they actually are suffocating and drowning in the soil, which is this case here. And also, with this soil not draining well, there is a salinity problem as I fertilize each day with the constant feed. Even though the constant feed is a very diluted fertilizer, because the water isn't draining through the soil, it's building up every day as I add more water and more fertilizer. You see the same thing happen if you over fertilize with compost or with manures because they all have salts in them because that's what minerals are, are salts. So to rectify this problem, I've made up a new batch of sand and sawdust. This batch is about one-third sand and two-thirds sawdust, so we have a higher sand ratio on it, which will make it drain a lot easier. I simply mixed it here on my patio with a shovel, leveled it out, added some water. So here's the mixture right here. It's moist, but it's not wet, and the water will be able to drain well through it, and so we won't have drowning plants, and we won't have a salinity problem. So I've got this box ready. I need to add some pre-plant fertilizer because we always add the pre-plant and the weekly feed to the box. I just wanted to show you how little this is. You can see the measurements in my previous video when I did the original seedling planting. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle this on the box. I'll also add the weekly feed fertilizer and then mix this in and get it ready for the plants to go in. This helps balance out the pH and give the uh, plants some calcium when they're getting started. Now that I have the fertilizers mixed in and the seedling box leveled again, I'm ready to stamp out the holes to transplant the seedlings. To do that, I'm going to use this little device here that I made, which makes this task very quick and easy to do. All I'm going to do is take the stamp, push it down into the soil, bring it up, and I'll have 72 places to put my plants. It took all of about three seconds to do. Now I'm ready to transplant my seedlings. Okay, I've already transplanted several of the Pac-Man broccoli over to this seedling box. I'm going to show you the process. I'm using a dibble. This is simply a six inch piece of the half inch dowel that I cut. The thing that's very important to understand is that when you're transplanting plants, never grab a plant by the stem. Always grab it by the leaf. So here I've got a plant here. I'm going to use this dibble to kind of push the soil up and the plant up out of the soil. So I'm, all the pressure is, is uh, on the leaf. I'm not damaging the center of the plant at all. And I'm just going to take this and put it in a hole. I'm going to make sure I don't put the crown below the soil height. But I'm going to put it down as low as I can to give it support. Use the dibble and just push the soil around it lightly and then that is done. You can see that this process goes very quickly and doesn't damage the plant. Put a little bit of soil left on there and I'm just going to put it down there looking at the crown making sure it's above the soil and then come and get the next plant. Now some of these plants are pretty damaged so I do not expect a hundred percent success rate with transferring these plants. I think without transferring them, they would be in, be in worse situation because it's the saline level over here in this box is just too high and the water isn't draining. So hopefully we'll be able to take care of that problem here. Get my last Pac-Man broccoli. You, you may ask, is it really worth this trouble? Well, there's different ways of doing this and trying all different kinds of methods around the world. They have found that this is the the least expensive, most successful way in transplanting seedlings. And that's why I do it. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I do it with the tomatoes. It's really the same process. Getting underneath the tomato, breaking up the soil. You can see the soil is really too wet. 
I'm not breaking up much. I'm going to knock some of this soil off. There's the plant. Hope you can see this in the camera. I'm going to put it all the way down. You want to put tomatoes all the way down to the bottom because they will. All these hairs will grow roots, and you have a lot stronger plant. So there it is, all the way down to the bottom. And that one's set. We'll do the same for this one here. And there we go. So you can see this one here is laying all the way down because it's just, it's wilting. Oh, and actually you can see it just broke off because it's just too dried out. So this one's not going to make it. But the advantage is, is I planted extra seeds. And so knowing that, knowing that there will be some loss through the process. But these uh, tomatoes that I am transplanting should make it. And as you can see, they have the, the, they're starting to get their true leaves on here. Now instead of transplanting the seedlings from this box to this box, into these little holes. I could have just transplanted them into these four inch cups and then been done with transplanting. And that that's very doable and you may want to do that instead of going through this center step here. I want to show you this step because here we're going from about 600 seeds to 72 seeds. And if we went to these, then we'd go from 600 seeds to only about 20 in a box. So you're going to lose a lot of space by going directly up to this. This will get, allow you to get more plants going in less space. Then you can take your big, strong, healthy plants and put them in the 4-inch pots. By the way, we just keep these from plants we've bought over the years from the nurseries when we put plants into our garden. So if you go to a nursery or a big box store, you may be able to get these at no cost. Now, something else you can do is you could just go and get some potting mix, like I mentioned in my previous video, and just use that. And that's fine too. It's uh, much more expensive. It's certainly easier to do. And, uh, and that's fine uh, for a hobby gardener. I may be a little bit different mindset than most people. So I'm planning for a situation where I may not be able to go buy potting mix. Either because I'm unemployed and don't have the finances for it. Uh, it isn't available due to you know, bad weather. Uh, the trucks can't get in, it, it becomes too expensive, so it's cost prohibitive. And my goal is to grow all the produce that we can in my backyard so we don't have to buy any produce. My wife has been gone for seven weeks and I have literally been living out of the garden from what I've been able to harvest out of the garden. And that's primarily out of one grow box. So I may be planting a lot more than you are and may be doing more work than you are as a hobbyist. I have found that it's important for me to learn the skills now before I have to survive off of them if that situation ever comes. And if it does, I won't worry because I'll be prepared and I've gone through the experience of doing this myself. I may not be able to buy seeds. That's why I have thousands and probably hundreds of thousands of seeds on hand for the plants that I like to grow whether they're hybrids or heirlooms I have as you can see sand and sawdust which is very easy to store and inexpensive to get I have that on hand so I can use it I have my rain capture system so I don't have to depend on public water to water my garden or do you have water for the house uh, you don't have to make these boxes and put sand and sawdust in them you can go get um, the self watering seedling trays at the big box store or nursery and those will work just great you can moisten the little peat cups inside of them they expand you put the seed in it and you uh, water it the, up from underneath and it wicks it up and you've got plants and that's a great way to do it too or you can just put some potting mix into a cup put some holes in the bottom of the cup and plant your seeds that way 
the important thing is that you're learning the skill and I always tell myself I'm one season smarter at the end of each season I've gained that experience also another life lesson that I've learned is that education always comes at a cost there is no exception with that and that cost is either going to be the cost for going to a school like a university and getting a degree and being taught by an instructor or it's going to come from the from the cost of the school of hard knocks where you're trying to figure it out by yourself and you're learning by trial and error that's the most expensive school to go to I spend a substantial amount of my time studying not at universities but in research and studying ways to garden and the way that I have found that works the best for me and has been proven in over 30 countries for decades is the mint ladder gardening method matter of fact how do I know how to how to do all this well, I just went to the transplanting section of the Mid Lighted Gardening course book and read that section. Follow the instructions and I've got everything transplanted. So my gardening experience cost me uh, $20 for my garden course book. Of course I have the supplies and other materials that you would need doing any kind of gardening. By far, without a question, that's been the most productive way for me to garden and fastest and easiest way for me to be a very productive gardener. I have everything transplanted. Everything fit from one seedling box into two seedling boxes. I decided not even to transfer the lettuce because the lettuce just looks too far gone. And now that I can see the sand and sawdust mixtures side by side, where this was a three to one ratio of sand and sawdust, and this is a two to one ratio of sand and sawdust, I can see where this is uh, just too heavy for these little seed seedlings. There's another lesson learned through experience. I hope me sharing my experiences with you help you in your gardening so that you can feed your family, save a boatload of money at the grocery store. As a matter of fact, I've only bought two things in the last seven weeks. I haven't been eating my food storage. I've been eating out of the garden. I did buy two things and one of them was a box of cereal and that was just because I wasn't harvesting my greens fast enough from the garden to make my green smoothies. And the other was, I have to admit, a splurge. It was a $10 Papa Murphy's vegetarian pizza. And I brought that home and I sliced up some fresh onions on it, put some Spanish olives on it, artichoke hearts. It was wonderful. But other than those two items, I've been able to live out of my garden. You literally can feed your family of four in one twentieth of an acre with this very high productive highly nutritious gardening method known as the mint ladder gardening method this is LDS Prepper reminding you if you are prepared you shall not fear